Joining us now, Tim Lesko, Granite Investment Advisors, and David Bonson from Hightower's Bonson Group uh, to discuss this. David, I'll start with you. I mean, tech for a long time had been the only place that you could find growth in the, in the market. Is that still the case despite today's activity? I don't know when tech has been the only place you could find growth in the market. I mean, most sectors have done quite well here since the early part of 2016. Perhaps but it certainly the has been the strongest source performer. of growth in the market. No, no question about that, Kayla. That's right. And, and it's been really robust growth. And even you look at the performance numbers, some of those big uh, large cap names have put up just year to date, uh, over 40 percent in a lot of cases. So big performance. And that, I guess, is the issue we're dealing with now. They're just plain overbought. They're extremely stretched from a valuation yeah. standpoint. And now all of the language piling on about how no, no, earnings don't matter. You can't, mul you know, multiples, traditional valuations don't matter. This is the most dangerous talk that we hear as value investors. So, Tim, now what? I mean, we've, we're having this break. One day does not a trend make, but what do you do with this, do you think? Well, one day does not a trend make, and the FANG stocks are not really monolithic. They're, they're each in a different business. So as value investors, you, you, you take them apart and you figure out what you think the future value of those companies are. And in some cases, the valuations might be stretched, and in some cases, it might be some buying opportunities. And you just have to wait until these big, call it, I don't know if it's ETF-driven or index-driven sell-offs, create some buying opportunities. Tim, you, you, you just said, oh, the individual stocks matter. Let's talk about Amazon specifically. And I bring up Amazon because of all those stocks, that one from a valuation, valuation has never really mattered for Amazon. I mean, historically, going back over the last 20 years, it has managed for a couple of decades to avoid the typical valuation parameters that even Microsoft, Apple, Alphabet have been subject to from time to time. Is Amazon really different than the other stocks? Well, Amazon, it's, it's different in that I think if you look from a valuation standpoint, it's probably on the higher end of stretched than maybe a Facebook or, or a Google, where both Netflix and Amazon are out there in the stratosphere. So to say that Amazon is worth, is cheap at 160 times earnings versus 180 times earnings is a hard one for anybody. I think what Amazon is, people who buy it are betting on Amazon years from now, not Amazon next year. So we as value managers don't own it, but that doesn't mean that people don't find value looking out in the future. David, you said this group got overbought. That's clearly the case. One of the interesting things, though, is that the really largest tech stocks, like the FANG stocks and whatever other ones travel with them, have become almost part of the defensive trade, right? When people aren't sure about world growth, they don't want to buy the cyclicals right now. Uh, they actually buy what they consider to be these big, reliable companies. And it's similar in a way to what happened a year ago with some of the other safe consumer products type companies that got extended valuations. I mean, is that some recasting of what tech is for investors? I think that there could be some of that element, but I would add to that. I think that you also just simply have not only the window dressing that mutual funds are famous for, but the ETFs are having to. Their capitalization's gotten so big that it's forced a lot of technical buy volume. And ultimately, there is a sense that a lot of investors feel that there's safety there. A lot of managers are afraid to not own these names, and I can understand that. This takes conviction right now to say, look, if they get more expensive, we're okay to look bad for a little bit, but we don't want to be caught owning something that is going to drag the portfolio for three, five, seven years, which is historically what's happened when really good companies get way overbought. I could give so many examples here. We know the names we're talking about. And so to avoid them at these levels, you do have short-term risk that there continues to be funds piling in more, pushing them higher. But longer term, I think that it's just a bad value proposition. Okay, we have to go to this point, but good stuff. I suspect this is not the last time we'll be having this conversation. Tim Lesko, David Bonson, thank you both for joining us.